All right, guys, today I want to do a fun video that is kind of a bit of a subscriber appreciation, but ultimately also to kind of help other subscribers. And that is that I wanted to talk about my top four knives for, for EDC, so I trip over my words, um, that were recommended by subscribers. So I do definitely appreciate and try to take into account as many subscriber recommendations as possible. Now, of course, I get tons of recommendations for knives, gear, and etc. that, you know, like I can't afford or like track down every single one, but I do genuinely try to do my best. And so these are the top four knives, in my opinion, that were recommended specifically by multiple of my subscribers to check out that I ended up checking out and really liking. So let's jump right into it with number four. Now, number four or last place isn't necessarily a bad knife. It's probably not my favorite of the knives, but it is still really good and it's still a pretty cool knife. And that is the McNeese Mac 2. Now, this one specifically is a three inch. I know a lot of my people wanted me to get a three and a half inch, but um, I really just couldn't find three and a half inch ones. And this guy was pretty good. And I do honestly like my smaller knives. Like, to be honest, I do have quite a few, especially like my Hinder XM18 three inch and so I definitely am not opposed to smaller knives and that's not the reason you know why it's number four but uh yeah, about the only thing I really dislike and the reason that it is number four is you'll notice that it is a little bit of a chunky knife. And so usually I actually like chunkier knives, but on a knife that is this small, this compact, it kind of feels weird that like this is one of the thicker knives um, to put into reference. Like this is a full sized um, Spartan Harzy folder and you know, this is a big knife. And so you guys can see here, hopefully that these guys are like are the same thickness. So this is a you know, much bigger knife than this and uh yet yeah, this is a thick thick knife so that's about the only thing i really dislike about it but aside from that as you guys can see it is a buttery smooth uh, knife to open and close the blade shape is pretty good of course this one is made out of 20 cv so yeah but uh detent is right there it's such a flickable knife you guys can see it comes out or fires so hard and is just a lovely little blade very well machined i will say one thing to the credit of this knife being thick it is still fairly lightweight because hopefully you guys can see here maybe you can't but um on the non-lock bar side they milled out the handle in here so there's a whole bunch it kind of like internally swiss cheesed it and so it is nice that they did that or it's a nice touch that they did that so anyways it's also cool that they have titanium thumb studs you really never see that i will say i like the attention to detail because oftentimes with knives it's very easy to be like oh thumb studs you know uh they'll never really notice that but you know these are titanium thumb studs so it is pretty nice of course the centering is great on this blade and the handle and ergos are pretty awesome so anyways mcnee's mac 2 is a really cool blade and i definitely appreciate the recommendation all right, next one up is the Hogue Deca. Now, this is one of the first, at least for this year, um, one of the first heavy recommendations that a lot of my subscribers made. And they're like, hey, you got to check this knife out. It is really cool. And I honestly love the Hogue Deca. If for no other reason, you guys probably know that I'm not a large fan of Benchmade knives. And this thing is like the unofficial or maybe the official, honestly, um, Benchmade bug out killer. Like this thing is designed from the ground up specifically to be as like the Benchmade bug out as possible, but yet it comes in at a cheaper price and with better steel for the blade, at least in its stock condition. I mean, there are 20 CV or CPM 20 CV uh, bug outs, like my personal bug out is a CPM 20 CV version, but the stock S30V bug out is what this is really meant to compete with. It comes with Magna Cut steel on it. So, you know, for some people they may say, you know, like, oh, you know, it has magna cut but it may not be that well heat treated and i believe in the beginning at least the magna cut wasn't as well heat treated but even taking all things equal like 58 hrc s30v still isn't as corrosion resistant as 58 hrc magna cut right so like i, I will say like even if the, the magna cut which is a very frequent complaint about the hogue deca they're like oh it's not well heat treated magna cut but it still is better than 58 hrc s30v right so undoubtedly it is a better knife um, in my opinion but yeah great knife super thin super 
easy to carry, and it has been one of my favorites. Um, yeah, definitely like it. And I also will say too, I love this Warncliffe option on this, partly because of the Warncliffe, and then the other part is, hopefully you guys can see here, it is a compound grind. So this kind of forward portion is thinned out for extra slicing, whereas this back or rear portion is a little bit thicker for um, more robust tasks. So anyways, I do really like that um, blade option on it. All right, next one up is the Spartan Harzi folder. This is one that honestly took me quite a while to get because it was tricky to find one of these. And that is partly contingent on like, you know, I get a lot of recommendations. People are like, hey, you should check out this knife. Hey, you should check out that knife. Hey, you should check out this knife. And like part of it is me trying to find it. Like one that wasn't quite I don't, I don't think it was quite a subscriber recommendation, but a knife that I did want to pick up was the um, Chris Reeve Knives Omnimzon. And the Omnimzon was just a hard knife for me to find. I actually had to talk to, or I was actually talking to one of my Instagram friends and he said he would have one, or he had one that he would sell me. So that's how I ended up with my Omnimzon. So some of these knives like the Harzi folder are just tricky to find. So if you make a recommendation to me for, you know, like, hey, can you feature this knife or check out this this knife like I will try but oftentimes too I'm also like looking and trying to find one so if I'm not able to feature something immediately even if I do want it it's probably because I'm still trying to get one so unless you have one of those specific knives that you want me to feature and you either want to send it for me to review use feature um, or you want to sell it to me um, you know like then I'm reasonably limited in how I can get them right because a lot of these knives especially like the Spartan Harzi folder are not easy to find like they're not easy to get your hands on so anyways this is my spartan harzi folder this is the large version this is also the 2021 uh limited edition version this is what they call the battle babe and this one's also in damascus so this one is a little bit fancy um and that's part of why i wanted to get it at the time there was a smaller version that was like a tonto regrind that i was also looking at but for the price that the buyer, or sorry, seller wanted for this, I was like, it was impossible to pass up primarily because I wanted at least one Damascus knife in my collection. And I was like, this thing has Chad Nichols Damascus on it. It's pretty cool. Um, and it's also the full sized version. So this guy is pretty special to me. I do like the Battle Babe version. I will say there are a handful of other special edition Sartan Harzi folders that I might like slightly more than the Battle Babe. Like I think the Battle Babe's cool, but uh, there's kind of like this A10 inspired one or War hog inspired one and that one is probably like my number one design and then my number two would probably be the um like liberty or is it like liberty or death um something like that it's basically inspired by like 1774 and the revolution um, the american revolution so that one's probably like my number two and then the battle babe is probably my number three but once again all of these are very limited edition so like it's not super easy to find any of them so that's why i ended up going with the battle babe i like it once again probably a bit more than the plague doctor which the plague doctor is also cool uh it's probably like my number four design but uh yeah the battle babe is definitely really cool um it definitely looks awesome i do still really love the uh damascus on here absolutely beautiful i believe they call this the boomerang pattern but could be wrong on that one anyways the harzi folder was one that was heavily recommended and originally i was a little bit i don't want to say pessimistic but i was a little bit um like i didn't quite want to get one uh, because i was like eh, it's just a spartan knife right and i've known about spartan for a while but spartan primarily makes fixed blades so i was kind of unsure you know how exactly a folder would look from them but i will say if you guys don't already know from like my chris reeve knife specific i am quite a fan of bill harzi's designs so i that is like what pushed me to get it of course obviously the recommendations as well and i was not disappointed so the the harzi folder is very nice very cool um once again i will say the large version is a little bit bigger than i would personally love i still do edc this knife but for me i like around three and a half inches is like my larger kind of step up so something kind of like uh, what's actually in my pocket today um the sabenza is probably my upper limit so you guys can see that uh you know the harzi folder is not 
not actually too much bigger, but in blade length is a bit bigger. So anyways, um, the Harzi folder is a really cool blade and uh, definitely appreciated the recommendations. And I'm very happy that I could add this guy to the collection. I know a lot of my subscribers love looking at it. All right, so final last one up is the TRM Neutron. Now, to be completely clear, most of my subscribers recommended that I checked out the TRM Atom, and I honestly tried quite hard to get a TRM Atom, but all I could find uh, at the time was a Neutron, and honestly, at least from what I could tell, the Neutron and the Atom are pretty darn similar. Um, obviously, there's some blade shape differences, and there's some you know minor differences. They're not the same knife, but they are both made by TRM, and so that was good enough for me because a lot of people were like, just check out TRM, and I will say these Neutrons and Atoms go for a pretty good price. I want to say I paid about 160 for this one, of course used, um, but I mean, honestly, like this really doesn't look too bad for a used knife. Like there's some light scuffing on this side, I want to say one of these sides, one of these sides of the blade has some scuffing on it, but uh, yeah, it's definitely this orange side, but uh, it's pretty hard to see, honestly, but yeah, this guy is super slicey. It is, I think, one of, at least one of, if not the thinnest knife in my collection, and just to put this in reference, here's like the Hogue Deca, which is already a pretty thin knife, but the Hogue Deca versus the TRM Neutron, the Neutron is just a little bit thinner, and what I love is that not only is it thin, but it does have full, you know, metal liners so it feels good in the hand like this is a heavier knife than the uh, Hogue Deca because it has once again full metal liners so I really like that it's like it's thin but it still feels substantial and obviously you can still get a good you know forehand or forefinger grip on it and uh, you know use it just fine so uh, this knife is probably my number one favorite recommendation because it's because, you know, the Spartan Harzi folder is a really awesome knife. And, you know, all of these are technically awesome knives. But this one is, like, probably the one out of all of these that sees the most pocket time. Because it's just so darn carryable. And, once again, whipping out that blade. It does have, by the way, a really nice action. Very well tuned. But, um... The blade itself, super slicey. It loves to cut. As you guys can see, it is wearing a mirror polish on this thing, so it makes it extra slicey, but uh, it is just, it's a great knife to use. So not only do I like to carry it, and like I said, it arguably doesn't have the most character, though it does have, you know, black and orange handle scales, so that's pretty, pretty cool. But, uh, you know, it doesn't have as much character as the Battle Babe, but it is a really, really functional knife, and that's what I absolutely love about it. So anyways, guys, that is the top four four knives from my subscribers that 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 my subscribers have recommended to me and definitely I would say keep the recommendations coming because you guys obviously are able to use a lot more knives tools than I can singularly as one person so I always appreciate the recommendations even if I don't check it out or if it feels like I'm not going to check it out like I may not come out and expressly say like I'm going to get one of those especially if it's a more challenging knife to obtain like the Hope Deca is easy because you can just go on Amazon and buy one of these but these other things like the Mac 2 like the McNeese Mac 2, your only alternatives are A, finding one on the secondary market like I did, or B, trying to catch a drop, or, you know, even like these limited edition Harzi folders, you know, trying to catch one that's for sale by a dealership um, or like a knife dealer, um, or trying to once again find one on the secondary. So, Oftentimes, I do go to the secondary market to try to get these knives, and when you do that, it's great and it's fun, in my opinion, but once again, you're at the mercy of whatever you can find. So, anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.